<laughs> All right, everybody. Eric Jackson here. Uh, this is uh, in the know fishing. Thanks for thanks for joining me, and I hope you had a, a good time last uh, last week. Saw my two cents on motivation. I filmed that about half hour ago. So today is Wednesday. I'm fishing the FLW tournament. Uh, it's 11 a.m. Friday. This video is being launched right now. If you're watching at 11 a.m. Friday, I'm on the water like Chickamauga. Chasing my fishing dream to be uh, the new Kevin Van Dam of bass fishing. But today's subject is you can make a living as a kayak fisherman. That is right. Did you hear what I just said? You can make a living as a kayak fisherman. And uh, the timing is right. It's still early on in the, in the period, meaning uh, early on in kayak fishing. Uh, how early is it? Not really that early. It's like the perfect time. If you're thinking of making a big move and you want to make a big like lifestyle move and be a full-time kayak fisherman, now's the time to do it. Uh, how am I an expert on this subject? Well, I'm like one of the first guys to make a living as a whitewater kayaker and in a much more challenging situation. I know how to make a living as a professional athlete. I still make most of my money as an athlete, as a whitewater kayaker or a fisherman for that matter. Um, and I think you should at least consider it. Am I suggesting it's for everybody? Absolutely not. It's not for very many people, like just, you know, one in a million people, it's the right thing to do. But if, for those of you who are watching, the numbers are a lot higher, statistics are higher for whether you should consider it or not. So let me give you a, a few inside tips. I'm going to give you a little kind of a road map. And then a little kind of a, how to think about it yourself, decide whether this is the right thing for you. Number one, if you just want to kayak fish all the time and that's all you want to do, you just can't think of doing anything else, I'm like one of those guys, then um, that's a good start. Uh, if you want to kayak fish so much that you don't really care how much money you make and you're willing to take a huge step back in your income in order to go kayak fishing more, Hey, you're, you're still in the game. You're, you're probably the right person. If you are super motivated and are willing to work hard, meaning um, kayak fish a lot and then do the, everything else that's around it, the whole process, because let's get one thing straight. Nobody gets paid to fish. Nobody gets paid to kayak. Um, athletes don't get paid just to do what they do unless they're a, a cog in a wheel, like on a, in a team sport. But even then, they get other responsibilities. But in an individual sport like fishing, where the income comes from prize money, and but more of it comes from endorsements, sponsorships, um, working for brands at events, helping as a member of their marketing or sales team, uh, being motivated to do that and having a total package and being um, happy to, to do the total package and not just the fishing part is going to be key. So... If you feel like you really, you like the whole industry, you like the kayak fishing industry, you like the, the brands that are in the industry, the people in the industry, the events that happen, and you want to participate in more of them, you want to go to ICAST, the Forestwood Cup, the Bassmaster Classic, you want to go to, um, uh, you want to see dealers, you want to do stuff like that, you want to make videos, you want to, um, uh, you want to work with brands, help design product, stuff like that. If that's the kind of stuff that motivates you, you're like, ooh, yeah, I want to do that. Like, sign me up, sign me up. And all that stuff isn't, you're into it, you're still in the game. So you don't have to turn the video off yet. Okay. Here's some steps. Sorry, I'm fidgeting because I'm motivated to talk to you about this. All right, step one. I already told you step one. You got to be willing to take a step back, step down. You got to be willing to make less money or even no money, maybe even lose money in the beginning. Well, how do you do that? I've got responsibilities, whatever, whatever, whatever. Well, if you can't do that, well, then you don't need to be a full-time kayak fisherman. You got to be willing to do things like, you know, for example, in my whitewater career, I moved out of a suburban Washington, D.C. house, lived in a nice neighborhood called Brookmont, drove a land cruiser. Um, we were in a total yuppie neighborhood. Remember yuppies? Yeah, that's an 80s term. But anyway, and we moved into an RV full-time so I could be a full-time kayaker. So we cut our costs by a lot. I think we reduced our total monthly expenses, which weren't very high at the time, by $1,100. and got to a point where 
I could travel around and I could teach kayaking a weekend or two a month, literally one, two, two to four days a month. I could support my wife and my two kids in a way that they were happy and we could travel around and do a lot of cool stuff. If I kept my land cruiser, my house in Maryland, well, first I wouldn't have been kayaking all around the country doing in the world, doing the things I wanted to do, but also I wouldn't have had the money to do it. So that's a reality check right there. Now, does that mean that you're always going to be poor? No, you could like crush it. There's going to be people that are going to crush it and make a lot of money in kayak fishing. There's going to be kayak fishing millionaires, I'm telling you. Um, but they're going to be self-made. And uh, I'm just saying that there's an opportunity there. So here's what's going on right now. Um, tomorrow, Saturday. This Saturday, the first FLW kayak bass fishing tournament happens. It's the KBF or the FLW KBF Open on Lake Nickajack. It's Saturday and Sunday. It's $200 entry fee. If you haven't signed up, maybe it's not too late. You can sign up and go. That's a good starting point. Um, Chad Hoover with uh, Kayak Bass Fishing has done an amazing job with the series. Um, there's people getting $100,000 payouts out of a kayak. Ooh, pretty cool. And yes, prize money is a big part of being a professional um, kayak fisherman as a tournament fisherman. But it's by far not the only part. The main part is being part of a marketing team, uh, marketing or sales team for brands. Brands out there, um, they want the real deal. Brands like Jackson Kayak, uh, Warner Paddles, uh, Raymarine Electronics, Power Pole, Strike King, Luz, uh, you name it, go down the list. Um, brands like that, um, brands like uh, Nissan, Fat Tire Beer, ooh, oh, I'm, it's, it's 5.30 or so, 7 in the morning, I'm not drinking beer right now, but anyway. You know what I'm saying? There's people that need marketing help. And kayak fishing is an exploding sport. It's in its infancy. It's growing rapidly. Tournament fishing is exploding and it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. More people are going to do it. It's going to get more competitive. Um, and more people are turning their attention to it. Now, you cannot come to a Jackson Kayak and say, Hey, EJ, you told me I could be a professional kayak fisherman and I want to do it. So I'm coming to you. How much money are you going to give me? You're like, probably none. Um, now we have this thing called JK Bucks, where you can earn for work um, uh, Jackson Kayak dollars. They're virtual dollars that sit in an account, and then you can buy Jackson products with it. Um, that's part of Team Jackson Kayak compensation. And there are people at Jackson Kayak that do get paid. Those people are integral part of our marketing arms. A lot of them are really good with video cameras, editing, sales, stuff like that, um, which is the key. So let me just get your mind set in, in a way that can work. So if you want to be a professional t kayak fisherman, number one, you need to want to do the whole process. You got to be ready to work really hard. And like, like it's not easier than whatever job you're doing right now. It's a lot harder work probably with a lot, a lot more uncertainties, um, like how much money you're going to make, if any, how long till you can make some money, um, Tournament results. Um, are you going to win the next tournament? You don't know. Um, if you're counting on it for money, well, you're going to be out of luck. So a couple keys. You've got to find a way to survive. You've got to find a way to, to spend most of your time pursuing the kayak fishing thing. And so basically you're eliminating a lot off your plate, like a normal job, um, or you're cutting your normal job hours out, or you're making your job remote and a lot less time required for your normal job. Uh, you need to um, shed as many expenses as you can and re reset that. And if you don't have a whole lot now, it's a lot easier. If you've got a whole lot and other people that depend on you and are comfortable with their lifestyle, well, you got some conversations to be had. And it's going to be a little bit harder. you got to figure it out. And it's either worth it or it's not. Um, but... Can it be done? And can you maybe in a few years make more money you're making now? Maybe in a year, two, three, four, five? Absolutely. If you've got the right skill set and uh, you work smart as well as hard. So a few keys. Approach the brands that are really important to you, that you really enjoy using, that you um, like. So for me, it's Cassian Rods, Strike King Lose, Power Pole, Ray Marine, Werner Paddles, Coca Tat. Chokar hooks, tough line braid, 
Um, the list goes on. Um, those brands, um, now of course there's bigger brands like Jackson Kayak, Orion Coolers, Nissan, Fat Tire, Casio. Um, man, I got a lot of brands I'm working with. I do have a lot of brands working with. You know why? Because I'm a professional kayak fisherman, in case you didn't notice. <laughs> Whitewater kayaker and kayak fisherman. And tournament bass fishing out of a bass boat too. Did I mention Ranger and Evan Rood? Woo! Yes. Yeah, so anyway, I've been doing this for a while, and right now um, I can make a living as a fisherman. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, I said that out loud. Now the reason I'm sharing this with you is because I want to see others take the same tact. Um, I wanted to prove it out, and I wanted to see where the kayak fishing thing is going, and the kayak fishing thing is going in the right direction. It is going in the direction of more tournament fishing. Um, it's also, there's other things involved out there. There's things like uh, expeditions. Not a lot of people are doing expeditions. Um, oh, by the way, watch for my expedition next year. <laughs> I love expeditions. So expeditions, really off the wall um, places like Jim Salmon's has a TV show that, that I mentioned, TV shows, um, kayak, um, fishing with Jim Salmon's. He's out there all around the world doing really cool trips. So he's getting tourism departments supporting him. Um, he's filming. He's been making um, epic shows in countries all around the world, like in continents, Africa, Australia, New Zealand, South America, Europe, North America. Epic. So there's an example of a guy. Does he make a lot of money? I don't know how much money he makes, but does he travel the world as a kayak fisherman? Mm-hmm. Paving the road. Jim Salmon's good job. Chad Hoover's another one with the uh, you know, bass fishing realm. Drew Gregory. Anyway, there's a, there's a number of them out there. There's some examples. But back to the tips. Shed your expenses. Decide what it is you really want to do. What is it when you want to do when you get it? If it's fishing tournaments and being a tournament fisherman, if it's TV show, if it's being a YouTube guy, like uh, you've seen Lojo Fishing. He made the full-time commitment. That Lojo dude, Lauren Johnson, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Guy has a lot of fun doing what he's doing. But anyway, YouTuber, uh, Scott Martin. He's a bass fishing dude, YouTube. Anyway, there's a number of them. Do a good job with that. Anyway, there's a lot of different ways. But when you decide what you're going to do, um, it needs to be something that you want to do. Because long-term, the last thing you want to do is jump from the frying pan into the fire and find that your that your daily activities are not what you want to do. Um, so the, the fishing is a huge part of it, but you're going to have other responsibilities when you're fishing. It's going to be, you're going to be filming while you're fishing. You're going to be with other people while you're fishing, stuff like that. So be aware, and it needs to be something you want to do. So if you got that covered, so you shed your expenses, you decided what it is you want to do. So for me, my kayak fishing has mostly been about just getting out, catching big bass, going to cool places, I haven't been kayak fishing tournaments. How come? Because I want, I'm getting my tournament fix fishing the FLW tour. That's why. <clears throat> Does that mean I'm not going to do tur kayak tournaments? No, kayak fishing tournaments are actually in my, um, in my future. In fact, tomorrow, <coughs> sorry, if I don't make top 30 in the FLW tournament in Chickamauga today, I'll be fishing the FLW kayak fishing tournament tomorrow. Um, what do I hope for? Well, seeing that... Uh, I paid $5,000 to fish the FLW tour this weekend, and I really want it to work, and I want to make top 30, and I've been trying to do that for the last four years. That's my first choice. But if I don't, I've got a good fallback, huh? Pretty sweet. Um, so you shed your expenses. Decide what you want to do. For me, it's um, for kayak fishing, it's expeditions, big bass, but it's getting them more tournaments coming up. Uh, and then start setting some steps for it. So I said, uh, hit up some key brands, key brands you want to work with. Decide what it is you can do for them. And don't expect anything or very little in return. Offer to work for, do this amount of work for this amount of compensation. Maybe some discounts off a product where they're still making money when they sell it to you. Well, how's that help you? It helps you getting discounts off a product and not paying full retail. Okay. Well, how do you make money doing that? You don't, but it's a step in the right direction. These brands aren't going to just like, oh, hey, here's a check. Oh, you want to be a kayak fisherman for money? Here's some money. No. You need to show them that you can add value, that they can spend money with you instead of hiring another marketing person or hiring an agency to do their ads and videos and blah, 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 or 
hire another tech rep to go to their dealers or whatever, whatever service you can provide, you need to show that you can do it at a higher level for less money than what they can hire because you are like a cat and hurting cats is hard, meaning you're going to be running around doing different things. For these brands, it's a little bit harder working with you or could be. Now, of course, your job is to make that as easy as possible. And how do you approach the brands? My recommendation is you approach them like this. Hey, uh, hey EJ, I'm so-and-so kayak fishing guy. I'm going to be a full-time kayak fisherman one day, and this is what I want to do. Uh, you know, um, uh, John Desayur is out of uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, anyway, down there somewhere. He approached me, and I cast this way, and I was like, John, right on. Anyway, we um, decided to support him and help them out. Um, why? Because he said, this is my goal. This is what I want to do. I've got big dreams, big big goals, and I'm going to try to accomplish these things. And hey, man, I understand. I don't expect anything from you right away. Just let me help you. And then ultimately, if I can prove my value, perhaps I can get compensation. That approach, it's hard to say no to. And then you can prove your worth. If you come in, even at the offer, asking for the amount that you're worth, well, it's a... It, who knows whether you're going to pull it off and where's the profit in that. So you've got to be able to pr provide this and only get that for compensation. And then you have value. And the bigger that spread, the more value. The bigger the spread, the more job security you have. The less chance that you're going to lose that relationship due to people not understanding how much um, value you provide. And here's a key. You will always think you're worth more than the person that is working with you. The brand that you're working with, they don't see what you do every day. They don't see every conversation you have, whether it be online or face-to-face. -face. They don't know what you're doing exactly. Even if you tell them, you give them highlights, they don't know everything. Their perception of your value will always be lower than your own. So when you come in with, uh, you need to recognize that. Whatever you think your value is, you need to cut it in half. And then in cut it in half again, and that's probably where they see your value. At least they see enough value that they're willing to work with you. And if you can remember that and stick with that, you're going to have a lot of long-term relationships. But if you start talking about how valuable you are then, um, uh, and how much money you're worth and blah, 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 and start pushing that envelope, you're going to be burning through relationships really quick. It's not going to work long-term. Yeah, that's a good tip. I hope you hope you take that tip. The... Um, uh, so anyway, that is um, the your value, what you're worth. Okay, what are we missing? We're up to talking to brands. Okay, then you're scheduling out your activities. You need to have a big goal, big objective. It could be winning the KBF National Championships. It could be uh, doing a big expedition that nobody's ever done before, making a feature film. It could be starting a guide service somewhere or something like that. Um, you need to let people know what that, that big goal is. They need to be along for the ride. It's really important that they're along for the ride. Okay, so now you've got a few relationships or you're working on a few relationships. Your next thing is you need to let people know what you're doing. So I do updates every quarter, sometimes more often than that, where I try to put down any articles I've been in, videos I've made, social media, stuff that's going on, tournaments, results, blah, blah, blah. Anything that I've accomplished or done over the last three months, um, I send that in to all the people that I'm working with. And the reason for that is because out of mind, out of sight, out of sight, out of mind, however that goes. Um, these people are really busy and they don't have time to, to follow up. Do you think I'm watching your social media accounts if you're on Team Jackson Kayak? No. Do I read Facebook, Instagram, YouTube? Nope. No, I post, and that's all I have time for, and then I'm off and running. I don't follow you. Why? Not because I don't want to. I'm sure you, there's a lot of amazing stuff. And then people point to stuff, and I see it from time to time. But how the heck am I going to follow 125 kayak fishermen, 125 whitewater kayakers? Um, my son, Dane, goes, hey, Dad, did you see that post? Like, oh, no. Oh, you ran a waterfall? Oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But anyway... So be aware that's the way the, a lot of the marketing people are. Some people pay more attention to that stuff than I do. But if you think they're following you, they're not. You've got to put it front and center and say, I did this. And even then, they're not going to read it. So you need to have a, just the highlights in the beginning. Okay, where does the money come in? 
that depends. Everybody's got to make the money come in their own way. Um, but as, if you're a tournament fisherman and prize money, if you don't have a long history of earning prize money and you don't know like what your average is, um, or I should say what your low is in the last five years, the least amount you earned, that's what you should count on. Um, if you count on, oh, last year I made X amount, next year I'm going to make more, and that's part of your financial plan, you're going to be in trouble because you will be disappointed. Prize money goes up and down depending on your performance. And while we all want to perform well, um, relying on prize money puts too much pressure on the events and you usually don't perform as well. So your goal should be to be able to make money and survive with zero prize money. And then the prize money becomes gravy. Good stuff. I did that with whitewater kayaking. Um, I used to fly to events. It was, let's say, a $3,000 first prize in Colorado. I can fly out there. I'm probably going to win. And the ones that I flew just to try to win prize money, I rarely won. My winnings were way less than the ones where I didn't go for the prize money. So my wife sorted me out in that. Christine said, you're not doing that anymore. You're, you want to go to the event? Go to the event. You want to go because you can win prize money? Don't go to the event. And guess what? I started winning a lot more prize money. And it was gravy. It's a way to do it. So decide that it's something you really want to do. Set up your daily activities to be what you really want to do. What is it you're going to do every day? Because it isn't, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be different than what you're doing right now. Why? Because you'll have self-created responsibilities of the, the things that are actually going to earn income. Um, so be aware of what that is. So make sure that that's what you want to do. And then once you decide that's what you want to do, you go after that as hard as you can. And I'll give you more tips later. Or you can, add in comment section down below, you need to subscribe to my channel here. You need to hit the like on this video, and then you need to add a comment that says, Hey, EJ, tell me about this specifically, and perhaps we'll do version two of this and give you some specific tips for your particular situation. But meanwhile, you could be a full-time professional kayak fisherman. It is a great time in the industry. Woohoo! Yeah, see ya.